Now on to patch bay, and let's talk about signal flow. So the first thing that happens, of course, is you have inputs um, coming from the stage, typically from your digital snakes, and you have inputs from your console. So if you guys want to follow along, you can just simply hit the patch bay button up here at the setup area. Let's hit that. And what will come up is a grid or a patch bay. So uh, if you hit the input tab, and then React A, for example, this is going to find the inputs that are coming off of the digital snake on React A. Then I have React B, so that's my second digital snake, and then I have uh, my console. And you can notice that, uh, let me actually use one of the React B inputs here, because my microphone is coming in to here. So if you have a signal coming in, you will see a green flashing light, or it gets yellow as it gets hotter, that very quickly lets you see which input which inputs are live and how you can patch them. Now your channels are down the left hand side. So if you've invested the time to name those, you can see that you can patch the appropriate input to the appropriate channel. So really, really straightforward. And some things that you can do are the ability to actually patch an input to more than one channel. So for example, if there was a microphone that was uh, there on stage that was center stage, and I'm going to pretend that it's uh, my microphone here, go across to lav2, I would be able to patch my input to a second channel. So if you had a, a female singer and a male singer that si shared the same microphone, but they needed totally different EQ settings, for example, you would be able, uh, and I'm just going to patch this here. Now I'm on two channels here individually. So now I'm on this channel. And now I'm also on this channel. So I would be able to go in and EQ myself uh, totally differently. Uh, for this channel, for example, and let's do something totally radical. Here we go. Just make myself sound totally different. So if this was one uh, EQ setting that I would do for myself, I would be able to then just switch faders and be able to get a totally different EQ setting. So an easy way if you have a shared microphone, maybe you have uh, Whitney Houston in your congregation that comes up and just blows the pipes, but then you have a guy who comes up and he's a totally different uh, kind of singer, uh, you can have totally different channel settings and very quick way to be able to change uh, the microphone for those people just by assigning, again, go back to the patch bay, the same input to more than one channel. Now let's bring this back here. Uh, so the handheld sounds correct, and what I'm going to do very quickly is go into the uh, EQ. I apologize, Terry, in advance. We may have to do some repair work after, um, but we'll go into the uh, EQ uh, settings here, and let's just flatten that so that when we come back, it's not going to be uh, totally crazy for anybody who happens to come back in. So back to the patch bay. Very straightforward to be able to uh, patch your inputs to any one of the 48 channels that you have here. Now let's talk about outputs. So you're going to, of course, have your mains left and right. And the way the uh, system works is it can see how many outputs you have here. So if it's a darker gray, that means that there is a, an output that you can actually address. And then if it's uh, a lighter gray, then it is still assignable, especially when we talk about the uh, personal mixing system and the R1000. Uh, but there is no physical output there to actually patch to. So that's what the differences in the two grays mean. Now, if you wanted to patch your main left and right, those are actually, I believe, patched to React A. Uh, no, maybe they're patched here in the console. So uh, from the console outputs, the main left and the main right are patched to the console outputs one and two. And you can see that we have these handy little arrows that say it's coming from the main, and then it points up and it says it's going to the console outputs. So that's just a, a little easy graphic thing that we've put in there. Now, what we have the ability to patch in this console is really, really fantastic. Uh, we can patch, of course, the mains, the auxes. So if you're feeding a wedge for a monitor, for example, you have the ability to do that. Uh, a matrix feed. So we've actually created a matrix feed. And what it's ascending is the main output of this console minus any of the microphones that John or I are using, or the handheld microphone, and we're feeding that to our uh, multi-track recorder that's actually recording all of the video on individual tracks here. So it's getting everything from the console except for my voice and John's voice. And then what we've done, so we can capture John's voice and my voice and the handheld individually, 
is we have sent those as what we call channel direct outs. So we have taken each one of those individual microphones and sent those to individual outputs here. So I'm sending those over to Chad, and Chad is able to record those and do a separate mix. So what sounds good in, in the house here uh, might not sound good when it's recorded as a stereo mix. So Chad's actually able to adjust that um, himself. The other thing that we can do is take any one of the preamps that's on the system, and when you see here, React A, 1 through 40, and then we'll see React B, 1 through 40, and then we have our console inputs as well. And we can take any input from the console and route it directly to an output without having to be assigned in the console. So for example, if you wanted to take some ambient mics and feed them into the personal mixing system, we could take those ambient mics and feed those directly into the personal mixing system uh, without having to use up any of the channels of the patch bay. It's also great for doing a broadcast mix or a monitor mix to be able to take the, that preamp and not color it with anything in this console, no channel direct um, coloring, and send it to that other mix position. So that way that mixer can create a mix that's appropriate for whatever application is being mixed over there. So really you do get a full audio networking capability uh, built in here in the console. So that's the nuts and bolts of the uh, patch bay. Um, and we can accept actually up to 90 inputs in the console. So if you had different bands that switch at different times and you, you want to change the configuration of which inputs are patched to which channels, uh, you can very quickly do that by setting up libraries. And in the library section, you would be able to go in and set up one and say it's uh, maybe you have a traditional service and a more contemporary service, for example, in your church. You could set up a patch bay for all of the uh, traditional instruments and have those patched and ready to go. And then a separate patch bay um, set up and ready to go for all of the uh, contemporary instruments or the instruments that are using the contemporary service. And you could very quickly change that just by hitting the uh, patch bay. And of course, the patch bay can change based on the scenes that you have built in there as well. So um, again, one of the great benefits of a digital console and one of the benefits of having more inputs available than maybe you have in your mixing console. So again, uh, very easy to put 90 inputs into this console, even though it's a 60 channel uh, mixer, you can use those extra inputs and access them very quickly uh, by either using the patch bay library or by using um, scenes.